Welcome back everyone. Today we're going to talk about hybrid coolers. Uh, hybrid in relation to having a TEC element slash module in there somewhere. Now they typically look like this. A dual heat fin uh, stack air cooler. But they don't have to be. They can be dual water cooled loops or they could be some part of it water, water cooled and some part of it air cooled. But you don't see them too often in saying that um, TEC cooled reservoirs come to mind. That's what I would call a hybrid cooler. Uh, so what we have here is we down here we have the CPU. And that applies heat down here. Now if you're not into computer cooling, you're just interested in general cooling, that is essentially your heat load. You then have a lower level here. So this is not the TEC, this is on the cold side of the TEC. And this goes to the front stack of heat pipes and cooling towers over here. You then have your TEC. in the middle and then you have your hot side of the TEC which is up here and that transfers heat up here you apply some wind to it via some fans generally which goes along here it goes through the first set of cooling fins and th then through the second set and out. Now, so you obviously have some, well, half the cooling underneath the TEC and half the cooling above the TEC. Now, why would you want to do that? Well, if you have half the cooling below it, so you've got half of it here, this and then half it on top, what that means is that you can turn off the TEC, turn that off, and virtually all of the heat will then be transferred up here. Okay, so that is very good for saving power. At idle, you theoretically don't need to have the TEC on because it will be cooled by the front set of coolers. Now, the the back set will essentially do virtually nothing. Now it is important that the TEC will actually conduct some heat across it even though it's off, but the thermal resistance of it will, is pretty, pretty jolly high, so it's unlikely to, to transfer any mu uh, very much. And of course it's supposed to electronically be turned on. Now you have the second set of heat pipes on the top of the TEC. So when you turn the TEC, TEC on, this then takes some load and bangs it into the second top set of heat pipes. Now this pipe here, this cooling stack here, is then going to cool the whatever heat load it's transferring up here, plus the electricity applied to it. Now another good reason for this lower level of cooling or heat pipes is to prevent condensation. With a normal TEC unit, the CPU load is very variable and it can change quite quickly. And that can result in the cold side of the TEC, which is going to be your CPU, falling below dew point and that can result in condensation. So this, this second set of heat pipes helps it to prevent that. If these TCs, if you can move enough of the heat up here, more than the CPU is putting out, then that will mean this lower plate here is going to get very cold, and so will your CPU. Now because there is a first set of heat pipes, instead of the heat coming out, it's actually going to do the inverse. We're going to now have heat flowing into it and, in, and into the bottom. So that this side here is overcooling, if you like, 
leaving the cold plate too cold and then instead of the heat which would normally get transferred from the hottest place which is the CPU to the heat sink it's now doing the same thing but that has in its inverse it's changed now this the normal air coming in here is now hotter than the cold plate and so the tra it's now transferring heat underneath the TEC and therefore preventing the cold plate from falling below dew point. That's pretty handy. You could say it's not very useful in this day and age because you can just fire up some wires to your TEC and a sensor and essentially turn the TEC on and off to prevent it from falling below. Now another advantage of a hybrid system is what happens if your TEC is not powerful enough to move all of your CPU heat. That might be because of technological reasons or simply space, which you could say is the same thing. If you had plenty of space, you could fit trillions of QMAX, but the cost would be very high and it would be very large. So that's also a good thing about hybrid systems. You can uh, place in there a TEC which is not powerful enough to move all of the heat but you don't have to because if you can only let's say your load is 100 watts if you can only move 50 watts up the hot side then the other 50 can go up the cold side because you could say it's not actually cold and that is where it's a little bit hard to simulate TEC hybrid coolers because there is this kind of give and take. There's no point where it's on or off. Well, I mean, the TEC can be on or off, but some of the heat can go up the front, some can go up the back, or all of it can go up the front, or all of it can go up the back, depending if you have a powerful enough TEC and the ability to cool it. So that is roughly how it works. Now, the pitfalls of a design like this is that you're taking half the cooling to do one job and you're taking the other half of the cooling and doing a different job. So what I mean by that is you've got this stack here is cooling with the TCs not on and you've got the stack over here that is cooling the TC when it's on. So that means that half of your potential cooling is now being applied to your hot side of your TEC. Now that is, of course, not a very good thing. You've now massively reduced the, the TEC's ability to move the heat. So you could say that this stack of cooling fins and uh, heat pipes will be much, much warmer than had you applied all of the potential cooling to the top of the TEC. So that's where a bit of the problem comes in. Now if we take currently one of the best coolers out there, which is the NHD-15, which is truly massive air cooler, uh, it has a thermal resistance of about 0.1, lower being the better, which is actually really good. Now, if we were to uh, bang a T TEC under here and cool that, that would be 0 0.1 applied to it. But in a hybrid mode, you're cutting it in half, putting half of it onto the TEC, and the other half of it underneath the TEC, or if we use our colours correctly, under it. So what does that mean? Well, you've got half the cooling, so that actually means it, it's doubled. So that means that this is not now 0.1, this is 0 0.2. And if we fire up our TEC calculator, we can have a look at what impact that has. So here is a 85 watt cooled CPU. It's got a thermal resistance of 0.2. And you could say that works fairly well. 
we've got just above 31 degrees which is just above our ambient works great but what happens if we overclock this bad boy to say 170 watts well all of a sudden it's not looking very good this gray line here is if you just didn't bother with the TEC and you just applied the heatsink directly to your load so it is hardly better than doing that and you can see temperature wise 60 degrees however if you had applied all of the cooling to the TEC all of a sudden we're back to it's not too bad we're at just over 30 degrees uh, which is certainly some excellent cooling So that's roughly the three reasons for hybrid coolers. One, they prevent condensation. Two, you can run the cooler without any power, as in the TEC off. And three, you can do TEC cooling with not very much uh, TEC QMAX. So I hope you've enjoyed that one, guys. Please subscribe. Give us a like if you are so inclined, and we will see you on the next one. Thanks guys, bye bye.